bang out this intercooler bracket. So we've got a Phoenix performance intercooler. And we're gonna get it to go in here. There's plenty of room here. There's plenty of room. You drive a bus through there. The uh, trans is not looking so bad, is it? It looks pretty good. That's a little bit of airflow through there. Could have gone a bit bigger, but we'll see how this one goes. Um, obviously PTFE fittings, or PTFE hose, a braided hose, all the fittings. Uh, so that's 6AN or AN6-6. Dash six. It, uh, it's just temporarily put up there. So what I'm going to do is mount it up there on the chassis rail like that, away from the sway bar bracket. So it'll look like that. Not too much. This really good clearance there. Looks bad. I don't know what's going on there. But anyway, looks like that. So you can see it's definitely not going to scrub on the road. Um, this will be up there like that. This will be back here a little bit. Tuck that up. So we have this is M16 by 1.5 to 6AN fitting. And that'll work for the A340 and also BTR Falcon gearboxes. So Barra stuff and single cam stuff and E-series and AU and BA and BF and FG. So the fitting there is, it's basically just a um, an orb fitting on the end or it's actually not an orb, it's um, it is M16 or 1.5. It's a true metric fitting. Um, and we've got two of those in the original. So that's the, obviously the fitting that was already on here and we just adapted it so it could go to 6AN and then braided lines to the front. And that one too, all the way, runs along nice and neat. Well, it'll be a lot neater once we get the brackets and, and the clamps and it feeds to the oil pump, the oil cooler, which is in the front here. We'll get a bit of airflow. Always, room, there's room to upgrade, you know, so we can go a bit bigger. We can put a fan on if we have to. But for now, that'll be fine. Um, custom gearbox cross member, tail shaft. It's actually the factory tail shaft. And well, that's the factory saw that the engine came from. And that is the GA70 Supra tail shaft at the back there going onto the diff. And that was not that hard to do, I guess. We'll see how it goes. You can see we've got plenty of clearance at the front here on the Sora mounts. So we've used, as I said before, we've used those Sora alloy bits at the front there. So that's the Sora, that's a factory Sora mount. And that is a Volvo rubber mount up there. See, it just bolts in normal. It's used in a lot of conversion mounts. It's used in so many. So yeah, our, our main goal here is to get the motor in, get all the parts fabbed up so it all goes together. So let's get this um, intercooler bracket made. So what we want to do is get the intercooler up in this gap here which is a huge gap it's not a it's not a the intercooler is not even 100 mil so it's three inch but it's not 100 mil wide so we're gonna try and get something off this radiator support to go out to hold the intercooler and then we'll make some nice alloy brackets for the top but we're going to use some flat bar down here whether we have to weld it to here i'm not too sure we'll see let's see what we can come up with let's test out phoenix intercooler today. Foam. Look, packaging's good. Lots of foam, lots of cardboard. Uh, looks like it did come pre damaged. It's pretty normal though nowadays. You can't have 100% quality. Let's check out in there. It's not bad, it's bar and plate design. Three inch on those ends there black that's good always good got the uh, Phoenix logo on the front there guess you could flip it if you didn't want it they welded pretty good nice and strong 
So yeah, it's not a bad product. It's it came recommended from other people who boosted. So I mean, when someone recommends something, that's always good, right? So let's make some brackets and get it up there. Make a bracket to hold the intercooler first. Because it's a big boy. It's pretty heavy. Being bar and plate. So you can see it's got these little, well, that's where the original intercooler bots went. And they went up there to that little bracket. And they went up to the turbo and over this side. Same sort of thing. There was a bracket there. I took it off. Blah, blah, blah. So the thing's not going to be low. So we can go through here with our three inch alloy bends anyway so what I want to do is work on that to be where our bends go they're only gonna then they're still probably not gonna hang down as much as the bumper right and we'll get the intercooler up there might tilt it a little bit but I think what I'll concentrate on making is some steel brackets that go from here to here so I'm gonna use alloy on the top so it looks nice and you know all that sort of stuff but on the bottom here we're gonna use some plate and we're going to go from here out to support the bottom of the intercooler. So it's going to be the um, support for the intercooler. We need something pretty decent. I want to mount it a bit lower than this little cross member thing here because we want the three inch pipes to clear and not you know not be lower than the bumper bar that'd be good so we have to bring the intercooler down a little bit we're going to use this heavy or heavier plate and then we're going to i'm going to weld some plate off that to support the intercooler that way it'll give it a bit of protection like driveways that sort of stuff, bumps. <clears throat> Not that the Queensland roads have any bad bumps or anything. That would be unheard of. But also, if we get it lower, that way we can get a nice, a nice bend in here and go up in that gap there where we want it. Because we don't want to have to put a little join and then a little bend and then all that sort of crap that goes on. We don't snow VL turbo junk here. We're just going to go for the um, pipe out there. No joints, straight up to the throttle body on that side and straight over to the turbo on that side without too much stuff going on down here. We, don't want, we want to avoid silicon bends, obviously, just because it can cause leaks and then you're chasing those. If anything happens, the motor moves around, especially on rubber mounts. We'll do an engine stay, but um, we just want to avoid it anyway because there's nothing like a, a boost leak you can't get to. It's, I mean, that's enough to make you want to burn the car. So this uh, radiator has a notch there. I'm guessing that was for the original intercooler piping. So that's going to help us as well. So that's the first step. Get this plate in. We just marked it up, drilled the holes. The, the holes were already there. Drilled the holes in the plate. The hole was already threaded in the body in that bottom cross member like this, but further down. So we've utilized those. And then, like I said, we're going to weld a little bit of flat bar off there to support the intercooler. And then we'll go up the top and make some nice pretty ones out of alloy went with the um, brackets on the intercooler first so we've got two brackets on there just cut one the right length after I made a guesstimation drilled the hole copied it so those holes are centered and they're the right length to have enough meat to get onto here so basically we're going to weld those bits of flat bar up here but first, we need to take these down, put a little bit of a bend in them. So that way the intercooler can tilt forward a little bit. What we'll do is utilize this space so the intercooler will sit slightly more forward at the top. Not a lot, but just enough to give it some extra space there. A little bit of breathing room at the back because don't forget that the intercooler, the radiator, anything that's radiating heat, you need to keep it free if you can on the sides or you know on the face and on the rear part of it to let the hot air expel out of the the radiator because an intercooler is practically just an, a radiator so you can jam as much hot air in here as you want but if it can't escape from the core 
it's not going to cool down. And that's a fact. So if we can angle it a little bit, we'll get even more clearance in here. And it won't be so close to the aircon condenser, the aircon and the um, radiator, if you know what I mean. Plus having that angle lets it have a little more airflow. I've already modified that mount up there as well, since we're here, I'll show you that. Chopped off the bottom of this, it used to run down to here. We've reinforced it and added the bolts up there so that it doesn't need this reinforcement so much, the factory mount. So that way we can get the intercooler in there and on a nice bit of an angle. Anyway, we'll go bend those brackets, see where we're at. The brackets are tagged together there, a little bit of a spot weld. And a spot weld there, same on the other side. And this thing's not going to be even because those threads are not even on that radiator support, the bottom part of it, or that cross member, whatever you want to call it. So we've just got to try and work out where it's even enough that it doesn't look ridiculous. Also gives us enough room to run those intercooler pipes down and up into those gaps. So we're probably going to end up with a 90 on here, a three inch 90 that goes down, then another three inch 90 that goes up there. Maybe 45 on this side, obviously. It's just gonna be 90s. So we'll go 90, 90. Try and keep, we've got a fair bit of room to play with there. You can see the plates touching the intercooler, so we'll have to tweak this a little bit. But that's okay because it is leaning forward a whole heap. And we'll go up the top, we'll have a look at those um, brackets we can make up the top out of alloy. They can look real pretty, but for now that's good enough. We can work with that. Can tweak it it's nice and strong there is another eight millimeter thread in here so we can drill that hole and we'll have three eight millimeter bolts to keep that in there and then we've got these which are 10 mil thread to hold onto the intercooler we'll round all this up and make it look pretty give it a paint job so it looks like the trans cooler bracket in a nice and clean simple but clean we've got some stainless fasteners in there and we'll get that off to RC Fabworks and get the uh, intercool piping done for that. But for now, what we're going to do is lower it down. Take a look at it first. It is pretty central. It's a Toyota, so what I've learned is nothing is really legitimately centered. It's kind of like just whatever works for those guys. But yeah, not too bad. So what we'll do is take it down, have a look at those brackets. We can make it the top, see if we can fire up some alloy brackets for the top so it looks nice. Up here you can see how much of a lean it's on, how much further we'd want it to come forward off that front member there. We can start to work out and brackets for the top here so there's not there's not much up here okay before we get too much further i've got some 80 mil alloy flat bar there and i think we're going to go on the top here just because it's square it's going to look a whole lot nicer we can put some nut sets in there two more over this side run the plate down put a step in it down to the intercooler it'll look a lot nicer it'll be nice and square might be on an angle because you can see that's angled. I don't know what we would do there. Put a spacer in there, make it look good or something. Not sure. I think we're going to go up here. I think I'm going to go for this and um, put some nut sets in. So let's check that out first. So, what I'll do is I'll grab a piece of cardboard so we can work out our distances from there, from the right there to there. We'll make it out of alloy. See if it works. We'll do one first and then go to the other side. If it works out, it works out. All right, so we've got a bit of cardboard here. You can use any cardboard, doesn't matter. Obviously, the harder the cardboard, the better. This is a bit of flimsy cardboard, and I've cut it the wrong way as well, so it's going to be even worse. Better to cut it the other way so the lines run the other way, give it a bit of structural integrity. But what it's going to do is give us an idea of the length. So, not forgetting that we want to lean this to cool it back towards the car this looks pretty good 
first one's done. It's good enough. This coil is nice and straight now, so we can we'll know that this one here, we can copy it and it should be good for the other side. Do the same thing. I've got some nut certs under these hiding. There's some nut certs in the body. We'll do the same over here. Let's copy this one. That's the finished brackets on the top. Some temporary bolts in there for now until we get some more stainless fasteners. Let's give it a bit of a scrub up. We'll give that a sand and a polish later. And that's the idea. It's not symmetric because you can see there's a little gap here from the factory radiator support and there's a big gap over here. Two fingers, all the fingers. That's just how it is for whatever reason. But I think it looks all right. It's definitely sturdy. It's not going anywhere already and the bolt's even done up. So that's a good sign. Um, we'll probably cut some of this out or do something, but uh, I think it'll be fine. Looks good. We'll give it a polish. Give the radiator a polish later. That'll look all good. So yeah, we'll take that bracket off the bottom, give it a cleanup, give it a paint, give it a weld. Bob Girani. Back under here, we'll take this off. Might try and drill that other hole and weld this up all the way. Cut that corner there. So that fast that it can do up and finish all that off. Now I'll some priority, and then we'll paint it black. Round up all these edges so they don't punch holes in anything. See what we can do about pushing this up a little bit and then adjusting the top mounts just to get that off there. Got a couple of caterpillars on there. Couple down that end. Just gotta cut this corner for that washer so the basket is in there properly. Decent penetration there, so it should be strong enough. That's the finished bracket. It's no showpiece, but definitely do the job. Clean up all the edges so there's nothing sharp there. Got the extra bolt in there. Once we go get some fasteners, we'll replace those and make them all look pretty. So you can see it's plenty of clearance just there on the bumper. Just have to do some magic with some pipes there. Looks good next to the trans cooler. Should, we've got some brackets on the way and some um, clamps for that. For those braided lines. Once they go on, that'll look nice and pretty. We'll be able to put some brackets back here, make a little alloy bracket for that, stop it from hanging down. Should be apples. So yeah, front mount on the Supra. One more thing on the list taken care of. And one step closer to get it to RC Fabworks, getting the needs cooler piping done, get our rocker covers back on. Yeah, looking good, looking good.